We Were Liars, written by E. Lockhart, read by Brittany George. Chapter 55 That night I wake, cold. I've kicked my blankets off and the window is open. I sit up too fast and my head spins. A memory. Aunt Carrie, crying, bent over with snot running down her face, not even bothering to wipe it off. She's doubled over. She's shaking. She might throw up. It's dark out and she is wearing a white cotton blouse with wind jacket over it. Johnny's blue checked one. Why is she wearing Johnny's wind jacket? Why is she so sad? I get up and find a sweatshirt and shoes. I grab a flashlight and head to cuddle down. The great room is empty and lit by moonlight. Bottles litter the kitchen counter. Someone left a sliced apple out and it's browning. I can smell it. Mirren is here. I didn't see her before. She's tucked beneath a striped afghan, leaning against the couch. You're up, she whispers. I came looking for you. How come? I had this memory. Aunt Carrie was crying. She was wearing Johnny's coat. Do you remember Carrie crying? Sometimes. But summer 15, when she had that short haircut. No, says Mirren. How come you're not asleep? I ask. Mirren shakes her head. I don't know. I sit down. Can I ask you a question? Sure. I need you to tell me what happened before my accident and after. You always say nothing important, but something must have happened to me besides hitting my head during a nighttime swim. Uh Uh-huh. Do you know what it was? Penny said the doctors want it left alone. You'll remember in your own time, and no one should push you on it. But I am asking, Mirren. I need to know. She puts her head down on her knees, thinking. What is your best guess? She finally says. I... I suppose I was the victim of something. It is hard to say the words. I suppose that I was raped or attacked or some godforsaken something that the kind of thing that makes people have amnesia, isn't it? Mirren rubs her lips. I don't know what to tell you, she says. Tell me what happened, I say. It was a messed up summer. How so? That's all I can say, my darling Katie. Why won't you ever leave Cuddle Down? I asked suddenly. You hardly ever leave except to go to Tiny Beach. I went kayaking today, she says. But you got sick. Do you have that fear? I ask. A fear of going out? Agoraphobia? I don't feel well, Katie, says Mirren, defensive. I am cold all the time. I can't stop shivering. My throat is raw. If you felt this way, you wouldn't want to go out either. I feel worse than that all the time, but for once I don't mention my headaches. We should tell Bess then, take you to the doctor. Mirren shakes her head. It's just a stupid cold I can't shake. I'm being a baby about it. Will you get me a ginger ale? I cannot argue anymore. I get her a ginger ale and we turn on the television. Chapter 56 In the morning, there is a tire swing hanging from the tree on the lawn in Windermere the same way it used to hang from the old maple in front of Claremont. It is perfect, just like the one Granny Tipper spun me on. Dad, Granddad, Mummy, like the one Gat and I kissed on in the middle of the night. I remember now, summer 15, Johnny, Mirren, Gat and I squashed into the Claremont swing together. We were much too big to fit. We elbowed each other and rearranged ourselves. We giggled and complained, accused each other of having big asses, accused each other of being smelly and rearranged again. Finally, we got settled. Then we couldn't spin. We were jammed so hard into the swing, there was no way to get moving. We yelled and yelled for a push. The twins walked by and refused to help. Finally, Taft and Will came out of Claremont and did our bidding. Grunting, they pushed us in a wide circle. Our weight was much, was such that after they let us go, we spun faster and faster, laughing laughing so hard we felt dizzy and sick. All four of us liars. I remember that now. This new swing looks strong. The knots are tied carefully. Inside the tire is an envelope. Gat's handwriting. For Katie. I open the envelope. 
More than a dozen dried beech roses spill out. Chapter 57 Once upon a time there was a king who had three beautiful daughters. He gave them whatever their hearts desired, and when they grew of age their marriages were celebrated with grand festivities. When the youngest daughter gave birth to a baby girl, the king and queen were overjoyed. Soon afterward, the middle daughter gave birth to a girl of her own, and the celebrations were repeated. Last, the eldest daughter gave birth to twin boys, but alas, all was not one might hope. One of the twins was human, a bouncing baby boy. The other was more, no more than a mouseling. There was no celebration, no announcements were made. The eldest daughter was consumed with shame. One of her children was nothing but an animal. He would never spark, sunburnt, and blessed the way the members of the royal family were expected to do. The children grew and the mouseling as well. He was clever and always kept his whiskers clean. He was smarter and more curious than his brother or his cousins. Still, he disgusted the king and he disgusted the queen. As soon as she was able, his mother set the mouseling on his feet, gave him a small satchel in which she had placed a blueberry and some nuts, and sent him off to see the world. Set out he did, for the mouseling had seen enough of courtly life to know that he should stay home, that he would always be a dirty secret, a source of humiliation to his mother and anyone who knew of him. He did not even look back at the castle that had been his home. There, he would have never even had a name. Now he was free to go forth and make a name for himself in the wide, wide world. And maybe, just maybe, he'd come back one day and burn that fucking place to the ground. Thanks for reading with me today. If you liked this video, make sure to like and subscribe.